I would totally have a motion detector that when you went down the stairs and by the time you got to the, like, halfway through, it would go off and you'd hear, da na 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 Hey, nerdlings! What's up, nerdlings? Tom and Lady Lacey here to do a response video. We were tagged by VKQ Interests and Adventures. Something kind of fun that they did was try to figure out their Mount Rushmore of playable females in games. So that could be something that was important to the industry or something important to you personally. <laughs> we'll go ahead and throw Feral and Do You Nerd into the mix too. I know those guys are busy, but you never know. It'd be interesting to see what Lacey had to say about this whole thing. So let's jump right into it. You've got four figureheads to fill. Yes. So who are you tossing up on that mountain first? No particular order. Let's start with Princess Peach. She is not my favorite character by far. In Mario 2, it was the first time I ever got to play a female character in a video game. So it was super cool to me. I just liked the fact that I could play as a chick and she had a pretty princess dress on. So that was fun. I did try all of the players at, you know, different times, but I did like her power up because I am a terrible platformer. So the fact that she could hover really helped me not die a lot. <laughs> that is the main reason why Princess Peach is up there for me because she was the first girl I ever got to play as a girl in a video game. So a that actually looked like a girl. Let's put it that way. There, there you go. Because <laughs> I do know in some of the previous iterations of video game consoles, there were female characters, but this is the first one that looked like a chick. <laughs> that I could play as. I just like pretty dress, but functional too. Yes. So nice, nice. Uh, if you're sticking to the retro vibe, mm -hmm. I love the story behind this and next one. So Tyrus Flair. And I legit didn't know she had a name until I met this guy. <laughs> I was like, the chick from Golden Axe. <laughs> but I loved this one because once again, female character that I could play as and she was just as powerful as the guy characters. There was no, like, anything wrong with her or she didn't have any defaults or anything like that. But this is a game that me and my dad would always play together. So it was cool because we got to play together on, on the screen together at the same time. And it's just a fond memory that I have of playing video games with my dad and getting to play as a chick. And, you know, obviously, I don't know if you could really call her outfit super cool because it's the stereotypical bikini, but hey, look at all that armor that that little tiny triangle's had. Well, that's why I love it, it because it's an early memory of yours, yes. plus it's a gaming memory that you shared with your dad. Mm -hmm. And anyone that gets to play games and have those memories with their parents is always really cool. Yes. So I love that. And obviously, the big theme that we're seeing in these two, especially with them being retro games, is the fact that you got to play as a girl character, yes. which was a big deal to you It was a very big a deal because a lot of gamers these days have no idea what that's like. And I'm not trying to play a pity party, but, you know, I'm an old gamer. <laughs> Let's just, you know, lay it out there. And back in the day, video games were not for girls. Girls didn't play video games. So therefore, they didn't cater to the female audience and they didn't give you a female to play as because guys didn't want to play as girls. At least any guy I was around said that. It was a big deal when there was actually a female character I could play as. And I didn't care what she looked like, honestly, as long as she was a girl. Well, we're halfway through your Mount Rushmore of playable female characters. Who do you have next for us? Evie Fry. Oh, the sister of the Fry twins from Assassin's Creed Syndicate. One of the best things about Syndicate were the, the siblings. The Fry twins. Oh my gosh, they were so great. I couldn't tell which one I liked better. Jacob or Evie. They were both so fun. But that's the other thing that I loved about them. She was a playable character that had her own storyline, her own in-depth backstory, just like Jacob did. But you didn't feel like you were missing out on one thing or the other when you were playing as Jacob or when you were playing as Evie. It was very balanced. It was very even. It was very awesome. The other neat, fun thing about her is she was the first playable female assassin in the main storyline games. Don't come at me with Liberation. That was a side story. That was not, that was like a DLC thing. So yes. Not to mention, one of my absolute all-time favorite Assassin's Creed weapons was Eevee's. I loved this cane. In fact, I even bought myself a really crappy cheap plastic one at the Halloween store when it came out. <laughs> I just thought this cane was brilliant where, you know, you could pull off the top and you've got that like scythe thing at the bottom of the cane and you've got the top like knife and you can like double wield it. It was so much fun, so awesome. Strike a pose, you're about to beat someone's ass. Totally 
going in the bloopers. <laughs> I always told him, I said, if I ever hurt myself to the point where I have to have a real cane, you need to find someone to make me this cane. <laughs> yeah, like I'm going to give her a blade. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, I share a lot of the same sentiments with you. I love the fact that as you hop back and forth between the characters, they didn't feel inertly different. Like there were sp slight differences, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel like, you know, you were losing anything by playing as Evie over Jacob or vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, they had some minor differences in their weapons and everything, but the fact that they had much of the same move set, it didn't feel like you were limiting yourself with one player yeah. over the other, which was great. Plus, she was just adorable. You loved her freckles. I do. I still do. <laughs> She's great. The key to the walls is one must lead with one's right foot. <laughs> Everything all right, my dear? Do you require assistance? I never liked balls. <laughs> so before we hit the last game, we're going to do an honorable mention. And that is going to be... Lizzie from Rampage. I absolutely love playing the Rampage uh, arcade cabinet. And the special thing behind this one is one... I mean, not only do I love lizards, lizards and dragons, so obviously she's a given for me, but this was the very first video game that you and I ever played as a married couple mm -hmm. on our wedding day. We had our wedding reception at 1984's Arcade, so everybody got to play video games rather than some boring dance. I mean, why would you want to go dancing? <laughs> and this was the very first game that we ever played as a married couple. And Lizzie, in case you didn't know, which you should have if you would have checked out VKQ's video, <laughs> Obviously, all of the monsters are people that were transformed into monsters. So whenever you take too much damage and die, your monster shrinks down into a human and Lizzie turns into a lady who has to uh, carefully get off the screen because <laughs> oh Lizzie doesn't have any clothes, so she does not have any clothes. <laughs> and the last final game is Femme Shepherd. The thing that I loved about it is not only did you get to design the way she looked, you got to basically design her personality based on how you answered questions and how you played the game is how her personality came about. So it was, in a sense, your personality coming across. She was a very fun, endearing character. Everybody's character is completely different because, you know, no one's going to create the same looking person. So she is very much me. And I love that about her. And she was a lot of fun. And so were the other characters. Her interactions with some of the other characters was a whole lot of fun. And I just absolutely love the Mass Effect games. Well, I think you have a pretty great <laughs> representation here. You've got some old school characters. You've got some newer characters and everything. Definitely runs the gamut as yes. far as, you know, fantasy princesses, <laughs> historical, maybe, uh, assassins, and then space warriors, saviors to some. Oh, geez, here she goes. See, this is why I don't give her a blade. Oh, she's going to put my eye out. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> now, at this point, I would love to throw out an open tag because I don't want anybody to feel like we skipped over them or they haven't been included. So if you would like to answer, what is your Mount Rushmore a female playable video game characters? Let us know by leaving a comment down below to come check out your video because we yes, would love we would to love see to it. watch it and see what you pick. All right, well, while I still have both of these, I'm going to go. Oh, hush. <laughs> Bye, nerdlings. Bye, nerdlings. What's up? Oh, and there's a knife in there. Because we had our wedding reception at 1984. Well, I'm mad because my toy broke. Help me, help me, help me. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs>